Welcome to the Referrals Podcast, the show designed to help everyone from the solopreneur to the Fortune 500 company win the referral game. If you want to build a company with an army of ambassadors and raving fans who speak highly of you and refer you willingly, you are in the right place. And now, here is your host, Michael J. Mayer. Hey, everybody. Welcome back to Referrals podcast. Do we have a treat for you? A best-selling author, CEO at the age of 28. I cannot wait for you to hear what this gentleman has to say. I have subscribed to this guy's email list and to his lessons for years. And as you all know, I am a huge fan of unsubscribe, unsubscribe. And yet I still subscribe. I still learn from this gentleman. And I can't wait to introduce him and, and jump into a great conversation with him today about referrals. This guy's the author of Unstoppable Referrals. We all want unstop. What if you could just not stop the referrals from coming in? You just can't stop them. No matter what you did, they just kept coming. So we're going to talk about that today. And I have to tell you, big announcement with Referrals Podcast. Many of you know that a year ago, we weren't even on the radar. Uh, We went pretty quickly up into the top thousand podcasts in marketing. We set an internal goal that we wanted to be uh, top 10 in marketing by the end of the year, and we had no clue how hard that was going to be. We went to 62 by June 1st, and then as you, many of you know, in September of 2019, we hit 62, uh, and then we hit 12 in September, and then guess what? Ladies and gentlemen, we are now top 10 out of all the podcasts on marketing in iTunes, we are number 10. We are in the top 10 on our way to hopefully number one. But the thing is, is we're not, I love marketing. We're not marketing, spec. you know, we haven't written a ton of books about marketing. You know, this is about referrals. And, you know, if you want to call it referral marketing, but the thing is, is, is such a finite niche and yet we're growing rapidly. And, and the fact of the matter is, it's not us that's making that happen. Listeners, viewers, you're the ones doing this. You're the ones spreading the word, rating it, reviewing it, subscribing to it, downloading it, running, uh, jogging, walking, doing part of your morning ritual, part of your evening ritual, part of your day. You're the one that is making it possible. And I have a, uh, and so thank you. And then I have a big shout out to Lucy Tucker. Lucy Tucker wrote podcast at referco.com. That's the email to contact us suggest a uh, guest, suggest people we can have on. If you want to be on, let us know you should be on. The bottom line is podcast at referco.com. Lucy Tucker writes, hi, Michael Mayer and Brad Korn. What a great podcast. So many ahas and lots of notes. My favorite aha was keep the business that has been working for me for the past 10 years, which is 95% referral based, old business, and start a new business that is more intentional with notes and calls so that I will actually kind of have two businesses, my old business and my new business. I will start my new business today and not let it interfere with, uh, but support my old business instead. I have taken the make the phone ring a few times, read, reread, conducted a book group and gifted 7L, the seven levels of communication, several times and seeing you both speak numerous times. I learn from both of you every time I hear you. My husband, who is not in real estate, listens to referrals podcasts religiously and usually usually nudges me when a new podcast comes out to make sure I have listened to it. Thank you for always being willing to sharing your time and talent. I am grateful for both of you. Wishing you both a magical holiday season with your families. With gratitude, Lucy Tucker. P.S. I would be honored to help any of your clients in May. So, I tell you, I mean, that's why we do what we do right there is, is if we could just talk to the wall, it's not going to be very exciting, but we need people to walk the walk. And I have to tell you that it's just a joy to all of us that the finest compliment you could ever give to me and Brad or me and a guest, me and Steve today is to implement the ideas that we've shared. That's the number one appreciation. That's the number one compliment that you're going to hear. So Thank all of you. Thank you, Lucy Tucker. I have to thank my team, Sherry Mayer and Mandy Thacker, for helping making number 10 possible. Who knows? Maybe number one is on the horizon. But the only way to get there is through you, the listeners and the viewers, and and we know that. So thank you. And 
without further ado, I have to tell you that this is an uh, utmost pleasure. We've had John Jantz, we've had Stacy Randall Brown, we've had we've had you know rock star bestseller authors on this, and uh, today we have the author of the Unstoppable uh, Referrals, and he is the Unstoppable CEO, a CEO of a company at, at the age of 28 years old. Imagine the responsibility and leadership lessons he learned from that. So without further ado, I would love to welcome Steve Gordon to Referrals Podcast. Welcome, Steve. Hey, Michael. Thanks for having me here. And congratulations on being in the top 10. That's a huge accomplishment. I know how much work goes into that. That's amazing. Yeah, thank you. And, and what's amazing, I mean, another part of that I didn't even say was no marketing, no advertising, no promotion. So we haven't done any ad buys. We haven't done any Google buys. We haven't done any Facebook ads. It's 100% referral and word of mouth that the people who are downloading are, are sharing it. And, and, and that's, a, that's a special accomplishment in itself because we have been, okay, I have been tempted to throw some money to, to, to see what could happen if we did some of that and we haven't done it. And, and I know you would probably advise me not to throw the money at it and, and you understand the power of, of referrals and word of mouth probably as much as anybody in the world. So, so I think, what are you working on now? Like, let's, let's kind of start with, you know, man, the evolution that I've seen just from the emails I read from you, you know, you, you've, you've taken people from like this unstoppable referral entrepreneur to you've taught, you, you're taking them through the steps of using coaching as a different or coach and speak as a differentiation to now like this full on becoming an authority celebrity in your, you know, in your marketplace. And, and, and I'd love, I'd love to, to have you share with the viewers what, what that looked like for you. Well, I I tell you what I'm working on now is, is all around the idea of how do we make growth of our business inevitable, but to really understand that we kind of have to go back in time. And, you know, you mentioned, I I started out, I I became CEO of my first business at age 28. Um, And uh, I started there out of college and the founder asked me to uh, take over. Um, I was actually out uh, for a week when our first daughter was born and he called me while I was out and said, when you come back, you know, you're the guy. And, um, I gotta tell you, I didn't know anything at that point in my career about sales and marketing. Mm -hmm. Um, that was really the beginning of the education. And I think it's important to understand that for everybody listening, you know, so many professionals get sort of dropped in. It's like, it's like we parachute into this unfamiliar territory. We've got all this expertise and then we're dropped into a thing called sales and marketing Mm -hmm. and realize we have to get clients Mm -hmm. and we don't know the the lay of the land. We don't know how to do it. And so then, you know, then we're sort of taught by the, you know, the mentors that we have around us in our firm. And some of the things that they teach us are really, really good. And some of them, frankly, don't work very well, but that's what they knew. And, uh, and so I went on this journey, Michael, to, to really kind of understand, well, what does it take if you're selling something that's a non-trivial purchase, you know, you're selling a service, uh, or you're helping somebody with a purchase that is an important purchase to them, they're going to spend a lot of money. And it's something that they really have to trust is the right decision for them. How do you go about engineering that buying behavior? And if you can do that and you can do it consistently, well, now you've got a, a, a business that's going to, you know, be really great in, in terms of your experience as the entrepreneur. You're not going to be laid awake at two o'clock in the morning and, you know, worried, where's the next client coming from? Because I've done that and it's miserable. Yeah. Yeah. You know? so, so, so that that's really kind of how I got here is just being on that constant quest to, to get to that point where, you know, I always know where the next client's coming from. Yeah. I mean, it, it, it's like, sometimes I tell people that leads cure all ills, you know, referrals really cures all ills. And, and I truly believe that. I mean, if you have a, you have a staffing problem, referrals will cure that because it, they're probably not busy enough. If you have a salesperson leaving problem, then it's probably a referrals problem because if, if you have more referrals, then that salesperson's job is easier, more fulfilling, and they're working with a lot of people they love, right? And, and then if you have, a, if you have a, a problem with money, it's probably a referrals problem that can solve it. If you have a marital problem, I truly believe that referrals can save your marriage. So <laughs> maybe, but, but it is one of those where it's like referrals cure all ills. When you have unstoppable referrals coming in, 
then your, 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 your staff, your office, your team is busy. You're busy. Uh, you're financially typically profitable. You're happier because you're, you're working with people who you don't have to sell. All you have to do is serve. You're serving all the time. And, uh, and your, your, your marriage is happy because, you know, uh, the number one reason for divorce is, is usually financial fights. So you don't have financial fights when you're, when you're, and the other reason for divorce is typically a person's uh, lack of fulfillment in life, right? It, 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 they blame the other for that lack of fulfillment. So all of a sudden, you know, referrals cure all ills. And so you were the, the CEO of this, this company at 28. What was your role before you were 28 at that company? Just out of curiosity. So, well, I started out kind of right out of college and, and uh, I, I was just doing some of the technical work, um, kind of a professional in training. And, uh, and after a couple of years, I got asked to kind of manage the operation. So I had a little bit of preparation yeah. um, leading up to it, but had no idea that, that at that point, in life that, that that was the path that I'd be on. But it was fantastic experience. And I had a really great mentor uh, in the founder of the company who really kind of guided me through all of that. Yeah. Uh, and without that, I, I wouldn't have been able to be successful at it. Yeah. And you, and what's interesting is, all right, so, so you were from the operations side. So you kind of knew, you know, operations and the operations side is going to be fine. I know it is because I know it. I probably laid out the systems and, and the technical aspects are, are kind of similar to what I learned in college. But the sales and marketing side is something to figure out. We've got to figure out this side. And, and through your research, you kind of discovered that repeat and referral was, was really the, the avenue that made uh, the most sense. Or, or I don't want to put words in your mouth. You know, did you find that repeat and referral was going to be the best avenue? Or what made you decide that? Well, so it's interesting. So I, I actually, um, I'll never forget, I went to Barnes & Noble. This is back really before the internet was the great resource that it is. Um, and I actually had to buy a physical book and it was uh, this book called the, uh, uh, the Complete MBA on Marketing. And it was like, you know, about three <laughs> inches thick. Yeah, the text and it was all this like big company marketing stuff. And I didn't really understand what any of it was. Um, and, uh, and, and then a little while later I got turned on to direct response marketing yep. and, and began doing some of that, but all the while we're getting referrals. We're not really doing anything particularly intelligent to stimulate the referrals It's probably the, the referral experience that, that everybody who is watching or listening to this has like referrals. Sometimes they just show up and then some days they don't. And most of the time, we don't have a plan. In fact, you said you interviewed John Jans. I know in his book, Referral Engine, he cites some research that he did right. where, you know, when he interviewed uh, and, and surveyed business owners, something like 79.9% of them, so might as well be 80%, That's right. when asked if they had any kind of system around referrals, they said, no, I don't have anything. Yeah. And, that, and yet they said, like, you know, 78% of their business was through repeat and referral business. And yet they had no system for generating those repeat and referral clients. I just, right. that's that, like, doesn't a, make any sense. Yeah. Doesn't make any sense. But you know, we're, we're human beings and a lot of the things we do don't make it, you know, don't, don't make any right. sense. So um, it re really it was 2012 when I got very, very focused on referrals. So I had, I'd left the first company started our, our current consulting business and uh, and I, I put together a series of workshops here in the local area where we were teaching referral marketing. And I was teaching all of the kind of conventional wisdom and, and you could boil all of the conventional wisdom, you know, down to basically ask everybody that you do business with, ask them often. And if they give you a referral, follow up with that person until they buy or die. Jeez. And there's nothing wrong with that. I mean, that works, Yeah. you know, and, and we were teaching it. We had about 300 people come through, uh, these seminar, uh, these uh, workshops we did over the course of a summer. And I thought everything was great. Everybody loved it. You know, it's all stuff they'd heard before and they're walking out going, yeah, I got to do this. And they're motivated and, and all this you're stuff. you're teaching the traditional methods, right? So yeah. Teaching the totally traditional heard, methods. And you're just like, all right, I'm going to compact, uh, uh, I'm going to encapsulate it. And then, and then I'm going to, I'm going to, I'm going to teach them and, and yep. boil it down, try to make it a little bit simpler. This is, this is what I've heard. This is what I've read. Take all my knowledge, encapsulate it, teach it. And, and, and they came to this class and they're like, oh yeah, you know, you know I, I need to ask more. I need to ask at all. I'm not asking, right? And, and they knew they needed to do all of it, right? Oh, absolutely, yeah. So then I had the most depressing day in my business career to date 
about six months later, I went and I started meeting with them because I wanted testimonials. I wanted case studies. I wanted to hear the great things that they had done. And so I met with 20 people who had been through the, the workshops. Not one of them, not one of them had done anything. And, you know, I'm sitting here I mean, scratching my head. Before you jump into that, yeah. before you jump, I mean, so, so name two or three of these traditional methods that, that were taught during that session, right? Uh, well, so the, probably the, the one most people will recognize is make a list of the 10 people you'd like to be referred to and then go have one-on-one -on -one meetings with all of the, you know, the people in your network and share the list with them and, uh, and see who they know and see if you can get an introduction. So that's one, one of the things. Um, another was to have a, a really specific you know, a little 60 second commercial that you could repeat over and over and over again, hoping right. that the people who heard it would then know what the heck you did and know the when to refer to The elevator speech, right? The yeah. elevator pitch or the elevator speech. Yeah, absolutely. Keep going. Like asking for referrals had to be one of them, right? Oh yeah, asking, that's, you that's, know, that's, and that's, ask every one of your clients, you know, the, the trigger that we were teaching was ask when somebody thanks you. Mm. which is a good trigger. I mean, if somebody mm -hmm. expresses gratitude, a client expresses gratitude for something that you've done for them, that is a good time to, to, to talk with them about who they might know. That's right. But what we found was that it was the, the, the act of asking that was getting in the way of all of those people taking action. Mm. And fundamentally, as you drill down into it, it's because the, that business owner knew that if he went to his client and he asked one more time to yeah. take yet again from the relationship, that he was you know, taking deposits out, not necessarily putting a lot back in, and it was risky for him. Yeah. And, and so-, so it was risky, but that's not all. No, it's uncomfortable too, yeah. I mean. Yeah, awkward. Yeah, absolutely. And so most people, when given the opportunity, will not do it. They just don't feel comfortable doing it. It doesn't feel authentic to them. Mm -hmm. And, you know, and so I, you know, I said I'd been studying direct response marketing. And there's a, a technique in direct response marketing called two-step lead generation. And basically what that is, is you send something out, maybe it's a direct mail piece, or maybe it's an ad that you place somewhere. And then some, and, and it's offering some information some really valuable educational information to that prospect and they respond to it. And now you have a lead. Mm -hmm. And so I've been studying that. And then we, you know, we run into this brick wall with people implementing the referral stuff. And, and as I got to thinking about it, I thought, Oh, what if we put these two things together? Mm -hmm. And that's, that was really the birth of the unstoppable referrals method yeah. is, you know, how can we use uh, an information piece as a lever to orchestrate a referral yeah. in, in a way that feels good to everybody. And so there were some principles that we put into that. And the first is, you know, if you really want to expand the number of referrals you get, um, we, we use the word multiply because you really can multiply them. Right. If you really want to be able to do that, you have to remove all of the risk from the situation for the person making the referral. You know, in the, in the traditional method, as you know, it's, all risk on the person making the referral. If something goes wrong, even if you do your very level best, but even if there's a perception of something being wrong by that, that referred prospect, now all of that risk and all that downside transfers to your client or to your referral partner. And if we flip that around and say, well, if something really, 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 really great happens, Mm -hmm. Yeah, they'll get thanked maybe, you know, you might send them a Christmas card or something, you know, at that time of the year, but there's not much of an upside for them. So it's mm -hmm. all downside, very little upside. Why would they refer mm -hmm. unless the conditions are perfect? Right. And that's all about risk. So if you can remove risk, which we'll, you know, we can talk about how to do that, but if you can remove risk, you will immediately begin to unlock more referrals. So let's talk about that. Like, so, and we're talking about removing the risk uh, for the referral source, correct? Yes. So, so there's, there's no risk for them. And, and there are some people who don't see it as a risk. They're, they're going to connect people all the time without any problem. And, and they don't, they don't tie themselves to the outcome, but, but, you know, 80 to 90% of the people do have some of that feeling of, I don't necessarily want to refer because what if that, you know, what if it goes bad, you know? So how do we yeah, lower absolutely. the risk? 
Well, you know, in a traditional referral, you know, the, the place that we're trying to send that referred prospect is into a sales meeting. And Michael, I don't know about you, but I mean, I sell for a living and I don't like going to a sales meeting unless I'm the one doing the selling. Right. Right. So there, you've got to have this person who is a client or a referral partner do something they might not be very good at or comfortable with, which is sell someone on the idea of going to a sales meeting with you, right. where you are a, you're positioned as a big, scary salesperson, whether you know it or not. Right. Working by referral is not some fairy tale world. It's real. I've seen it. And you can too. Invest in yourself by learning how to run your business by referral at Michael's upcoming live event. It will be a day filled with hands-on, how-to, low-to-no-cost strategies that you can implement in your business right away. Learn how to run a business by referral that not only feeds your family, but feeds your soul. Go to www.gengenevents.com today. That's www.gengenevents.com. And that, that fundamental construct of, of the way we tend to do referrals is what makes it risky. So if we can say, all right, well, instead of making the initial interaction a sales meeting, mm -hmm. what if we had something that was easier, that was lower commitment? And the, the thing that we found that was most effective in doing that is information. We call it a referral kit. So you can think of a referral kit as being information that you package up so that somebody can pass it on. And you might pass, you might package that up in, you know, one of many different forms. So it could be a book. Um, and I would say, a, you know, packaging it up into a short book is sort of the gold standard. And yeah. we can, we'll talk about why that is, but, um, but everybody just freaked out for a minute because we said you might need a book. Yeah. So I, want to, I want to walk them back from the ledge a little bit. Yeah. You know, it could just be a really great, you know, checklist that helps them through an important decision that they have to make. That's, that's key for that prospect. Yeah. Uh, it could be a presentation like a webinar or a seminar that your clients can invite them to. Um, and it, it could be a, any combination of those. Steve, does it need to be my business related? It, does a realtor have to have it be uh, real estate related or can it be lifestyle related? I would recommend that it's, it's related to what you do. Yeah. Okay, because the people that respond to that, if it's related to what you do, are going to be more qualified. Yeah. Okay, so in real estate's a good example, though. So if, if in real estate, your approach is that I'm just going to farm an area, then it's a little bit different problem, right? I just want to know everybody in the area that I'm farming. Mm -hmm. Okay. But if I'm, on, if I'm in a different type business where I'm not necessarily farming an area, I'm actually sort of lead generating, looking for interested prospects, then I want that, to, that information to be related to what I do because I want to use that as a qualifying step. Yeah. And, and it, does it need to be universally applicable or can it be like super specific? So a moving checklist is different than a uh, here are the top 10 uh, remodeling projects you can do to raise the value of your home. One is, is pretty generic with the remodeling and the moving checklist is the only people they're going to give that to is probably somebody who's moving. Right. Well, let me ask you this. Do you, do you fish? Do you like to go fishing? Uh, yes. Uh, do I like to go fishing? Mm, maybe, but I, you know, I, I need to be careful with my humor here because I don't know you all that well, but there's a fine line between what we call fishing and like drinking a lot on a shore, right? So <laughs> it, it's, it's, I have to- That's okay. Yeah. I'm probably more along the lines of drinking a lot yeah, yeah, near the shore yeah, with yeah. a pole in my hand. But Do I like is catching? You, that might be the, that might that's be the, the better real, way. The real, the real, so yeah. So I, yeah, definitely love fishing. My, my but you get was a big the idea. Fish. So if you're going to go fishing, you're going to, you want, you want to do two things. You want to know where the fish are and then you want to know what bait to use. Yeah for the type of fish that you're trying to catch. And, right. and I think in any type of marketing, whether it's referrals or anything else, you want to be aware of those two types of things and different bait will attract different types of fish. And there might be a, a reason to use one versus the other. So you mentioned the, you know, the moving checklist, mm -hmm. um, you know, the, we don't work with a lot of realtors, but the ones we've worked with in the past, I can, you know, yeah, there's a role for a movers checklist, yeah. but you know, if you're, 
If you're looking for sellers, then you might want to create an information piece that would answer the number one question that sellers have. So what's the number one question that every, every potential seller has before they contact a realtor? How to sell my house in seven days. Right. How to, Actually, how to, I don't I mean, think it's that. I, I think the number one thing that they have in their mind is what's my house worth? Yeah, there we go. Yeah. 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 And, you know, but so you want to think in terms of what are they already asking themselves before they reach out to you? Yeah. And, but, and you can position it that way. Yeah, um, I love that. Tell your story real quick about your buying your home. Right. Yeah. So, so we, so um, that really like c cemented that, you know, this, this, this is, I mean, this, this referral way is kind of the way that we make all decisions, not just these little decisions, but the big ones too. Yeah, I mean, we, um, we built a house in 2015. And for those of you who have built a house, you know, it is probably one of the most painful and joyful experiences you'll ever go through in life. <laughs> Thanks for adding well, joyful. Yeah. Yeah, no, it's both because yeah. you're really excited about it. And it hurts the whole way. Yeah. Uh, and, you know, we didn't know a builder. And uh, we were going through the parade of homes and happened to walk into a house and bump into uh, a woman that grew up down the street from my wife. Yeah. Turns out her husband was a builder. Turns out he built the house that we were standing in. Turns out that it was a pretty good floor plan for us, you know, but we didn't go through like any big research project and bid out, you know, three builders for the thing. Right. The minute that we found someone that we knew that could fulfill what we needed we stuck with them because, you know, that little bit of relationship that my wife had with this woman from childhood, not from adulthood, from childhood, meant that, you know, we felt comfortable enough giving them a pretty big chunk of money making, you know, probably what would be one of the largest investments we ever make. Um, and that's a fairly thin line of trust, but it shows you just how thin a line of trust needs to be to work. And your referrals work the same way. So, Why they're so let, me, let me quote directly from your unstoppable referrals book, if you can. Is that all right? Yeah. I mean, and you were talking about you have you have four four uh, college degrees between the, the two of you. And yeah. and it's like, you know, lot, you, you would think there would be this giant checklist, Excel spreadsheet, decision making machine. And it's really as much as you know what, I kind of I kind of know this lady. It wasn't even like and trust. Maybe it was some like, but it was no. And then and then you had two people that you uh, trusted, right? I mean, you kind of trusted yeah. the builder too. But I have to tell you, in my home building experience, this is reading straight from Steve's book, which you need to buy. It's on Amazon, Unstoppable Referrals. Uh, in my home building experience, the piece I left out is that once we arrived on the builder's radar, his wife, who is really the relationship builder, used the months between our first contact and serious buying discussion to allow us to become familiar with them by inviting us to several family events in the neighborhood we're, we're building in and to see homes similar to what we wanted in various stages. To be honest, this was a really minimal effort on their part. Uh, much more could and should be done to ensure that the accrual of trust is the result of a system rather than happenstance. But it's just like, you know, I'm, I'm so glad you included that because What's funny is that a lot of times when people go through our system, the, the clients and the attendees and the get, they don't even know they're going through a system. They just, they just, you were observant enough to see that, you know, getting invited to these events weren't just because you were special or liked or there was, there was some motivation to that. Not everybody was invited to these events. Uh, so I just, you know, and that probably re-cemented and, and, you know, made more concrete. It, it reconfirmed your decision, if nothing else, you know. Well, I, the, the smart thing about it, so we, we've kind of stumbled upon them, you know. So if you look at it from a standpoint of lead generation, they didn't generate us as a lead. That's right. It, it just sort of, we discovered them and, and, and they got lucky. Yeah. But the part that's illustrated there that in, in that section that you read is that, once the relationship was created, they didn't let go of it. Yeah. You know, and they followed you know, up. Yeah, they followed up. And yeah. and I think so much business is lost in in that failure to follow up. I mean, that's 
I mean, our, our agency is, is built and predicated on, uh, you know, being the follow-up arm for our clients because I know our clients won't do it. It's not that they don't want to. It's just a heck of a lot of work. Yeah. Very rarely will the people come to you and make a buying decision immediately. You know, they just, they just won't, especially the larger the decision, you know. So, so the, the thing is, is that uh, it was very strategic of them to invite you to these events because it felt like a very low key, low pressure way to learn more about making, making this decision. And, and it was the what's next. If she didn't have a what's next, then the relationship would have withered and died. You would have just maybe built with somebody else, you know, maybe. We might have, yeah, we might have. And, you know, and I want to make a distinction because I, I don't think they were thinking, and I, don't, I, I don't think his, you know, the builder's wife was thinking strategically there. Maybe. Okay. I think she was doing, I think she was doing what was natural. She ran into someone she knew. Yeah. She was trying to be a good person and get us excited about, you know, potentially living in this neighborhood. And so she was, you know, just sort of extending these invitations. And I think that's what a lot of us allow ourselves to fall into is we sort of do it when it, when it, you know, when we're inspired or when it feels right. Mm -hmm. And the, the point of that part of the book is if you take it to the level of, of a system in your business, you now have something that won't fail you. Mm. because you will fail yourself. All right. I know, I know I will fail myself. If I don't build a system out of it, then somebody's going to fall through the cracks. That's right. That's right. If there's no what's next, if there's no reason for more communication, there will be no more communication with no more communication. There are no more sales. So, or you've got to start a new conversation. It's much easier to continue a conversation than it is to start a conversation with a stranger. You know, have you ever started a conversation with a stranger? It's, it's very awkward. It's very rough. It's very like, what the heck? But to continue a conversation is, is easy, but you just have to have a reason for that communication, which in her case, you know, here, let me ask you this is if you did find out that part of her strategy was to meet people at the parade of homes and invite them to events at their neighborhood, would you feel manipulated? No. Yeah. You would actually give her a high five and give her a lot more credit that maybe it was a strategy, right? I mean, it's like, right. and, and the thing is, is the beauty of the, her strategy is that most people don't think it's a strategy. You know, I mean, this, mm -hmm. this is a strategy that we teach in the 7L system, you know, every day, you know, and referrals podcast, people are tired about hearing about events as the what's next and the continued conversation. But you know, the fact is they haven't all implemented it. So we're going to keep talking about it until all yep. of you are implementing it. So, so I, I think let's unpack the referral kit a little bit more. Like what are some sure. examples? Cause this is such a, like, this is the gift. Like I talk sometimes you have a one-on-one, -on -one, take a gift. Like 7L would be a great book to take. Unstoppable referrals in paperback would be a great book to, to take because it's going to create a conversation around what? referrals, which is what you want your conversations to be around. But this, this referral kit is, is beautiful because it, it doesn't, it's not even for them. It's, it's not just for them to consume, but it's for them to consume and pass on. So, so what are some examples of things to put in this referral kit that people could literally start working on as soon as they get done with this podcast? Well, so you, you want to think in terms of, uh, you know, your, your ideal prospect and, what are the, the real challenges that they're facing, you know, that you can solve for them? What are the opportunities maybe that they have that they can't capture without your help, you know, which is another form of a problem. Mm -hmm. What are the questions that come up around what you do and, and about, you know, the, the, around that problem and what are the consequences if they don't take action, if they don't do anything and, you want to start there. And that's kind of the opposite of where most people start. Yeah. Most people will start with, I've been in the business for X number of years and I got all these letters after my name. And I mean, I got a client who's got more letters after his name than in his name. Yeah. Um, you know, and it's, those are all great things, but that's just your ticket to the dance, mm -hmm. you know? And so you've got to start with the things that are on the minds of the prospects and that's whatever their challenge is. Mm -hmm. Okay. And, so, you know, in the referral kit, you want to address those things head on. You want to start with the, the problem, the big problem that they face. Okay. And, and explain why it's a big problem. 
You want to talk about the consequences of not dealing with it. You want to talk about all of the different um, questions that, that they have rolling around in their head that you can answer. Mm-hmm. All of that, uh, it, it serves a really important role in, in establishing you as an authority and as someone that they can trust and differentiates you from everybody else. So we've talked a lot about realtors here today. Yeah. Um, you want to talk about a commoditized profession. That's right. It's kind of the definition of a commoditized profession. And yet some realtors do far better than others, right? Mm-hmm. And yeah. they are looked upon not as commodities, but as experts and authorities. Well, that's mm-hmm. intentional. They engineer that. And that's this right. is a way that you can engineer that. Um, and so, you know, in your referral kit, you want to kind of put that information in there. Now, once you've figured out what that information is, you can package it in a number of different ways and you might want to package it in multiple different ways for different uses. So you might package it as a presentation that you can give to an organization. Mm-hmm. You might package it as a webinar that's available on demand on your website that, that people can you know, send their friends to. You know, I would highly recommend you package it as a book, even a short book. And I talk about this, one of our clients very early on when we were you know, teaching this to clients and helping them implement it, we had a, a financial advisor uh, go through the program and, and he created a book and his target market was physicians. And he created this little book on the, the key challenges and decisions that physicians need to make as they come out of their residency. Mm. And I, I kid you not, the thing was 12 typed pages in Microsoft Word. <laughs> yep. We had to do some formatting wizardry to yeah. even get it to the point where it could be formatted as a book and printed because the binding machines have, you know, minimums that they can't go below. Right. Okay. So calling it a book was being generous, but we got the thing formatted as a book and guess what? Then he had something, you know, that looked and, and felt like a book to hold up and to hand to people. Right. And, you know, I I said earlier, the book is sort of the gold standard of referral kit. And the reason it's the gold standard is we know what a book is worth. We, we hold books in high esteem because they have valuable information in them. Yeah. And Michael, I don't know, has anybody ever given you a book as a gift? Oh my gosh. I have a library of uh, 2000 books and I'd say at least a hundred of them are gifts. Yeah. Okay. So were you ever offended by any of those hundred books? Even if it was one you didn't like? So, the, I mean, the short answer is 99% of the time, it's, it's a no, right? There are certain religious groups who give books that I've, I've rebelled against. But you're right. 99, I mean, here's the thing. If it's helpful and it's no ordinary, the answer is 100% yes, right? Right. And if it's well-intentioned, right? You know, right. If, 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 if it's coming from someone that you know yeah. and you think that they had your best interest in mind in giving you it, even if you were not interested in the topic at all, you're not going to be offended. You're actually going to think more highly of the person who gave it to you. I love it. I okay. love it. They know I love to read. I'm, I'm, and it, there's a power to books. There's a wisdom in books. There's a, you know, there's an esteem in, in the authorship. Absolutely. Right. right. Yeah. So if you're able to package up all of your wisdom around the problem that you solve for people and, and the solution that you provide, and you can do that in a book and then go to your clients and your referral partners and say, you know, Michael, I'm on a mission to transform the way that small businesses get referrals and and drive business through referrals. And I know I'm not going to be able to help every business owner out there, but I've written this book because this is how I want to really impact people. And I know that, you know, some small business owners that need more referrals. Mm -hmm. Would it be okay if we sat down, we scheduled maybe 20 minutes and brainstormed some people that you know, that are in your network that I could send a copy of this book to as a gift from you. Would you be open Mm. to that? Yeah. Yeah. That's brilliant. Right. I mean, that the answer is yes. It's an easy yes. And uh, you know what, what's interesting, Steve, and and just, uh, you know, tell me if I'm on the right track here. Right. So I've got a referral kit. And at first I was thinking, you know, this top 10 list, you know, Dave Letterman made the, the top 10 list pretty, pretty popular. And it's a, it's a great structure thing. So I, if I'm a sign company that, that does sign, it was like the top 10 tips for creating your sign and it's, it's 10. And then I got to thinking a little bit more even on this. It, and, and, and I have to tell you, we've got to bring you on again, right? I mean, we're, we're running towards the end of this and, and 
where we have it, we've kind of started at the road of getting referrals and you've taken people on the road from getting referrals to teaching and speaking and coaching on referrals to doing podcasts that lead to uh, referrals and, and authority and, and celebrity status and, and that kind of thing. And, and unfortunately, we haven't had, we, we haven't unpacked that yet, which I'd love to do on a future podcast if you're open to it, right? Absolutely. The, the thing I'm thinking about this referral kit, I think it's enough. You know, I, th I think we could talk about all that. And then the, the listeners would be like, oh my gosh, you know, I've got, I've got this, I've got events, I've got this to do. And, 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 and what they really should be doing is, is what's their referral kit. And it, and it's got to start with one piece of paper and, and hopefully eventually that is a, um, and that is a, a small book and, and maybe it develops into a bigger book, but you could take that book and, and make it into a, a presentation, a, a keynote or a PowerPoint. And I have to say, tell me, I mean, instead of doing in the top 10 tips for great signs, I'm thinking that everyone should do the top 10 tips to get more referrals, right? And, and those 10, that list of 10 are, are what they heard on referrals podcast, what they got out of your book. And, and then they, it's like, it's referrals, right? So the message is referrals and then they get the, the message and they're thinking about how they could get referrals or, or adapt referrals. It's a very B2B strategy that I'm thinking right now. But the thing is, is, is it's, it's about referrals. And, and we want to be first in mind when we kind of like it's referrals. Everything's referral. That's why you become a coach, speaker, talk about referrals. The number one way to get referrals, people think I would say events or one-on-ones or, or phone calls. It's not. The number one way to get referrals is to teach on referrals. That's the number one way to get referrals. It, it is. It, it, I mean, I hate, I usually do not share that secret, but anyway, let me, yeah. so am I on the right thought there with a referral kit that the referral kit would actually be, okay, here are the, and you would gear that towards small business owners, networking partners, CEOs, you know, people who, uh, you know, do business and want more referrals. Does that make sense? Yeah, you, you certainly could go that route. You certainly could go that route. Um, in fact, we'll, um, we'll share with folks, and I know you said you've got a place where you put downloads. So what we'll do is we'll, we've got a one page um, thing called the, uh, the, the referral mindset scorecard. Love it. And this, I, we, we create these scorecards sometimes for clients. Um, I'm a big believer in them. What we, what we usually do is we end up creating these and they're the first step towards writing a book. It's almost like the book outline. Mm. And, um, and in it, it describes the mindset of your ideal clients. And it also describes, you know, kind of camouflage the mindset of the clients you don't want. And you have wow. people fill this thing out and they score themselves so and gonna, they can wait, see. So you're you're going to share the referral mindset scorecard assessment tool. Yeah, uh, this is a, a very large value for people that don't know, uh, and and they're going to be able to to go and and take this for free. Yeah. Oh, geez. absolutely. Yeah. So go to referrals podcast. I'm going to lock him in on this before he, he double thinks this. So I, I and this guy's a very generous guy. So I don't doubt this at all. Referralspodcast.com. Go to referralspodcast.com. Uh, we will have the referral mindset scorecard assessment tool. But not only that, but we will also have a link to Steve's site where he has several other resources uh, about generating referrals, uh, including the referral kit and, and other things like that. Uh, referralspodcast.com, you can check that out, uh, or the unstoppableceo.net slash referralspodcast. Um, Steve, if somebody wants, are, are you still doing speaking and teaching? Are you, do you do some speaking and, and still do that? I, I do. Um, I do most of my speaking virtually now on podcasts and uh, uh, in webinars and things like that, mostly because I'm really working to get out of the, my, uh, my Delta status completely. I'm, I'm trying to stay home more. I love it. And so they can certainly get your books uh, uh, at Amazon. And then if somebody wanted to reach out to you uh, to learn more about, you know, starting a podcast, uh, more about 
the referral kit, the more about your programs and, and what you teach virtually? How do, how do they go about doing that? Uh, best place to go is unstoppableceo.net. Um, again, we've got the page at unstoppableceo.net slash referrals uh, podcast. If they go there, there's actually a link where you can schedule a call with me. I'd love to, to talk with any of your listeners. I love it. Steve, this was phenomenal. I, I enjoyed this so much. I, 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 I have to tell you, I mean, we've taken about one half of one half of one half of 1% of your wisdom and, and shared it. We have more to share. I, would, you, would you be open to joining us in the future to, to talk about the next steps to that celebrity authority way of, of generating referrals? Because it's so yeah, good. Yeah, absolutely. I'd love to come back and, and, and share more. Yeah, we'd, we'd love to have you back and, and thank you so much. And uh, so we need to thank Steve Gordon. For those of you that are listening or watching, uh, go to unstoppableceo.net. You can also go to unstoppableceo.net slash referrals podcast uh, to see those downloads. Uh, at the very least, I'm going to tell you, subscribe to his email list, subscribe to his community, and you will get regular emails that make you think about generating referrals in a different way than you've ever thought before. Uh, we haven't even talked about what's the secret reason most of us are not getting referrals. We didn't talk about so several other things that uh, you'll definitely learn through his uh, through his email. So, Steve, thank you so much for being a guest on, on Referrals Podcast. Michael, it's been my pleasure. Thanks for having me. And thank all of you viewers and listeners for tuning in for another episode of Referrals Podcast. If you enjoyed what you heard today, do us a favor, do a rating, do a review, subscribe, download, send it out to the people that uh, you really feel like should be generating more referrals. If you've got teammates, send it to them, coworkers and colleagues, send it to them, send it to your broker, send it to your owner, whatever it may be, but we do appreciate you. And uh, we made top 10, maybe number one's on the horizon with your help. So thanks all of you for this wonderful episode of Referrals Podcast, and we'll see you next time on Referrals Podcast.